Well, cool. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So um, everybody, welcome to our call about what to expect when going remote, how to prepare for a trip and transitioning into a new community with Hacker Paradise. So we'll talk a lot today about if you are going to come join a Hacker Paradise trip, kind of how to prepare to get on it, what to expect when you're on it, and all sorts of things like that. Um, we're gonna quickly do some introductions of ourselves, me and Jess and Sada, who are here uh, running the panel. Um, then we'll talk about, like I said, how to clean up your life pre-trip, what to expect from the community while you're on the trip. Also a brief explanation of what Hacker Paradise is for people who might not know, what's included in the program and the cost. And then uh, at the end, we'll talk about why you should choose Hacker Paradise, why we think we're a really good program. And then we'll have some time for Q and A. Now, just to set some ground rules uh, and talk about just how this will go. We can't hear any of you and we can't see any of you in this webinar format. So if you're trying to talk to us, we can't hear you. So the best thing to do if you have any questions that come up along the way is to go to the Q&A section and that's separate than the chat function. I know lots of people just introduce themselves on the chat, which is great. But if you have an actual question, we'll want you to go to the Q&A section and you can submit a question there. Um, I had a couple of people that emailed me some questions beforehand, which is great. Uh, we'll try to go through those two in the Q&A section. Um, you can submit questions as we go, just so you don't forget about them, but we probably won't come back and address all of them until we get to the end, or we might take a break in the middle if, if I feel like I've been talking for too long. Um, the event is scheduled for about an hour and a half. Uh, it might not go that long. We'll just kind of go with it and see how it goes and um, get through our spiel at the beginning. And then if there's questions at the end, we'll keep going through and answer as many of the questions as we can. Ladies, did I miss anything before we get started? No. Nope. Cool. Um, so we'll start with some introductions. We'll introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Spencer. I'm the CEO of Hacker Paradise, and I am currently calling from Brazil. I'd give you a nice view outside the window here, and I was actually going to sit on the patio before, but it started getting stormy and it's too windy to actually hear. So I had to move back inside. Um, but I'm from the US um, and I've been traveling with Hacker Paradise for the last three years consistently. Um, so yeah, excited to have you guys here. Excited to talk to you a little bit about what we provide and how to get out on the road. Sara, you want to introduce yourself next? Yeah, Sara here. I am from Italy. Maybe you can guess it from the accent. <laughs> Um, I've been traveling with HP for 16 months now. I joined January 2018 as trip facilitator, and it's a role that I'm still that I still have. I'm currently in Taipei with a group, so here it's midnight, and I'm gonna show you an amazing desert co-working space. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> I found I found out to switch on the light here, but there are actually two people working. Seb and Natalia are still here. <laughs> Um, yeah, before I was living in Belgium for four years, I ran a co-working space. It was not at all a remote job. I really tried hard to figure out how to bring my human people skills over the road. And then a friend sent me a link to Hacker Paradise and here I am. I've been a remote job, even if I'm not a tech person or a designer or something else. Jess. Cool. Um, I'm Jess Warren. Um, I am originally from the New York area, I'm living in Austin, Texas now uh, for the past eight years. Um, you could say I'm kind of like a, oh, I'm an alum of Hacker Paradise. So that's why I'm representing the alumni community today. Um, you could say I'm kind of a part-time digital nomad. I live in Austin most of the time and then I pop in and out of Hacker Paradise whenever the the travel bug hits me. So um, I've been on five trips with HP. My first one was in Porto almost three years ago. I was trying to decide if it was three or four years ago, three years ago. Um, and that's where I met Spencer. Um, and then my most yep. recent one was in February with uh, Sada. That's where we met in person for the first time. And so I've gotten in-person time with both of these folks, which is not um, you know, you start to get to know a lot of different alumni just from 
from in person or from the digital world or whatever. So it's cool when you get to meet each other and get to know each other um, IRL as well. Um, so um, a little bit more about me for work. I am a UX, UI and graphic designer. Um, I freelance, which allows me to travel and work remotely as well as in Austin. Um, and for fun, I like to pet dogs, um, <laughs> sit on patios with beer <laughs> and, um, like be a crafting nerd as these guys know, which if I sat, I thought maybe I made all these wonderful pattern pillows behind me, but I did not. Um, yeah. Anytime, anytime I talk to Jess, I have to ask if the things I see in the background, she's <laughs> created herself because half the time she has. Um, I don't know about that, but, um, but yeah, I like to kind of get my hands dirty with different, um, things off the computer as well as on the computer. So, um, yeah, I think that's me. Thanks Jess. Yeah. We're really excited to have, uh, both Sada and Jess here with us today. So you can get a lot of different perspectives. So if you have questions that are specific for me or Sada or Jess from the different perspectives of people who work for the company or run trips or have come as a participant on the trip, you have all the perspectives here that you need to get your questions answered. So feel free to ask all sorts of questions in the Q&A box that we can answer uh, at the end. So I want to talk a little bit about how to clean up your life pre-trip. We have a lot of people who ask us, okay, if I'm preparing to go on a trip and I want to go on a trip, how do I go? And so we'll talk through some of like the basic logistical pieces and then some of the fun pieces that we've learned after traveling uh, for a long time. We'll kind of go around and talk a bit about them. So I'll, I'll start. The big thing for us and for people going out on the road is to find a remote job. Uh, as many of you should know, we don't provide jobs for you. So uh, we try to point you in the right direction if you don't have a remote job already of where to find a remote job so you can come and join us. So if you haven't heard of them before, there's a really good resource called wemote.com, which is actually a website that is doing a remote work matchmaking service. So if you haven't seen that, that could be a good place to go if you don't have a remote job. Um, and then uh, yeah, once you have a remote job and you're ready to come out, that's when you apply and talk to us and we kind of go from there. In terms of uh, after you've been accepted on a trip and you're planning on coming, some of the things and the recommendations I give to people, one, remember to do all your checkups before you leave if you're going to leave for an extended period of time. I've seen so many people that don't bring like a prescription for their contacts and then have to like scramble to figure out how to get that while they're abroad. Um, there's all sorts of other things you might want to bring. I have, a, I take like Tums all the time. And for whatever reason, that's like difficult for me to find abroad. So every time I go home, I like stock up and buy Tums. So like you just have to sit down and think what kind of things like that are important to you and stock up. Uh, the other thing that lots of people don't prepare themselves for is that if you're going to move abroad in any capacity, uh, that make sure you have a social structure in place. If you're coming with Hacker Paradise, that's a good solution for that because you'll be with Sada and Jess and me and 20 other people exploring the country and so that you have that there. But uh, I know myself, if I'm traveling alone for about five days, I start to go crazy and need to have some sort of social structure in place. So make sure as you're going abroad that you uh, know how you're going to talk to your family and your friends and keep in touch. Know when you're going to go home and visit them. Make sure you have a social structure abroad. Uh, whether it's Hacker Paradise or some other type of structure. Uh, the other tip that I give everybody, which is a silly one, and I thought it was so ridiculous when someone told me at the beginning, but pack bags inside of bags. So people come out with like one backpack or like a suitcase in a backpack, and they think, I have one backpack. I'll be fine. I'm going to use this backpack for everything. But you get, you don't realize, yeah, you don't realize until you move abroad. You need a backpack to carry your luggage in. You want a different backpack to take your computer in. You go hiking one day, you want to have a backpack. You want a tote bag when you go to the beach. So I have like all sorts of packable bags that I pack inside of my other bags. And for me, that's been like a lifesaver. Um, there's been times when I see someone like run home, dump out their laptop and their pencils from one backpack 
throw in like their bathing suit and their towel and their sunscreen and then run with this huge hiking bag to the beach. And it's just like not natural and you wouldn't do it in normal life. So to avoid that situation, my pro tip is to pack bags inside of bags. Sada, what do you have for us? Yeah, no, something very concrete. Go get your vaccinations. You don't know, even if you have a scheduled itinerary, some countries are weird. Always check the yellow fever. I think it's the most important vaccine that you need to have. If you travel around Latin America, some countries request that vaccine. If you travel like from Brazil to Colombia, you need to have it. But if you travel from Brazil to Europe, you don't. Just go get that vaccine and avoid to be stuck at the airport. It happened. So don't do that. And then something that I always tell people is to pack something that you really like, even if it's not really necessary. Sometimes it's nice to look at something that reminds you of your time back home or like nice memory with your friends. I laughed a lot when Tam, she was with us in Greece. She's actually traveled <laughs> with three magic stones. <laughs> but I really, they, we don't, they very useless, but she loves carrying them and she keeps them next to her bed and she just makes, she just feels at home by looking at them, whatever home means. I travel with a pink wig, so we never know when I'm going to wear it or not, but it's something funny that I like to carry and it's totally not necessary, but it's still nice to have. Um, don't overpack basic stuff. I bought this H&M t-shirt in Italy and I just bought the same one in Taipei the other day. Uh, if you want to get work done, it means that you need Wi-Fi where you're going and usually good Wi-Fi means that you also have shops around you. And the only thing I pay attention is beauty products, especially if you travel to Asia, most of the things are whitening here. So unless you want to whiten your face, buy your beauty, favorite beauty products at home. But those are my concrete tips. I will say that if you go on a trip with Sada, you will love the day that the pink wig comes out because it comes out at least once every trip. And you know, that's the day that oh, it's oh. going to get really fun and people are going to go dancing and have a good time. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> cool. candy with the KMVI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the persona changes. Sorry, I have some notes. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. What do you have first? <laughs> So one of my things, if you're from the U.S., is consider your credit and debit cards that you are getting, probably for around the world as well, but at least the credit cards can have points in the U.S. for travel, um, and then you can get the priority pass. Is that an international thing as well, or just... No. So, no? No, we don't... So, I, these are more not U.S. Oriented, but if you... <laughs> the priority pass gets you into lounges, mostly around the world, not really domestically as much. Um, Certain credit cards get you a lot of points and then certain debit cards uh, reimburse you for any international fees um, so that when you take the money out of the ATM, you're not getting any fees whatsoever. Um, so that's a pro tip. I'm not as familiar with the international cards, but I know there's some new fun hot pink cards going around and stuff that a lot of people are having. So um, maybe look into some of those. Um, I would... I. I sometimes forget to do this, but I would bring some small bills in like literally even any currency when you first get there. Um, because if you have a driver or something and then tipping is in the culture, you might feel awkward if you don't have any money to tip them and you just, ex or you could exchange money for smaller bills once you get to the airport. But if you show up and you have nothing and then you're like, sorry, it's a little, it just feels a little awkward to me again as a U.S. person that, an American that is used to tipping, but um, uh, also it makes me feel a little more comfortable to know that I have some money when I get there, no matter what currency it is. So that way, if my debit card is blocked for some reason, or I don't have any money to exchange, or that is the money to exchange, it just makes me feel more comfortable. Um, and then as Spencer said, the more I travel, the more I get used to like, oh, I could really use hand washing, no rinse soap for my clothes. Um, or those little packets, either the camping soap that's liquid or the little packets that are like, you can look into this, but they are sheets, so they don't count as liquid on your carry-on. Um, and then I got a drain cover that covers any drain pretty much in the world. So you can look into that kind of stuff. Um, travel size, like bug spray and stuff like that was handy for me. I know you can buy all that stuff everywhere, but as um, 
Sada said sometimes beauty products can be not what you're looking for or even more expensive than you're used to, if especially if you're on like a remote island somewhere where it's all shipped in and then they know you need sunscreen. Um, it will be a little more expensive, but you can find it. So consider that kind of stuff. Um, and then I actually had things like, like Spencer said, like I put bags on bags on bags. Like I have everything. Um, I also have um, like waterproof stuff for my phone and my GoPro, especially if I'm going to the beach. Um, my GoPro is a big thing I bring. Any sort of camera equipment that you might like or any projects you do. Um, and then I like to bring like uh, Saturn knows I brought a little watercolor kit last time uh, to Thailand and then we had a little watercolor lunch with a few people and we were watercoloring postcards that we could send back to friends and family. So that's a fun little thing that I could do with people once I'm there. I also bring little teeny board games. So uh, like more card game size board games. Um, so that's um, that's a good thing too. And it's a bonding experience once you get there, but then it's also something that's like kind of a fun little add on. So, um, but yeah, you don't want to overpack either. So be pickier about what those things are. Yeah. I feel like we've all said similar things and there's like a fine line to walk between like overpacking and taking tons of stuff, but then you should also like take the stuff that is important to you. Uh, so I, yeah, I feel like you have to sit down and be like, all right, I really don't need 12 shirts. Like I can get by with, seven or whatever take these out but like this little thing here or my we have people who like pack their ukulele in or something like that something that like has value to you and is going to be really hard to get in that place you should bring with you yeah you can always steal the, the clothes from your roommate <laughs> one last thing this is like logistics but um i had friends coming to bali actually when i was there and then they got turned away at the airport in san francisco because their passports expired within six months. So just be aware. Mm. Luckily it was before, it was like their layover, but it was before they got to all the way to Bali. Um, but just be aware that um, certain countries have restrictions or not restrictions, yeah. but um, I don't know what the word is, but um, they require requirements for uh, yeah. how long your passport is valid. Yeah, and at least two blank pages. That's usually the, the rule. Yeah. I went home and just had to get my passport redone because I only had three blank pages. I was actually running out of stamp room. And so I had to get a new one. I almost got caught with that one. Yeah. Nice. They stamp all <laughs> my thing. I have all my stamps in four pages, but keep stamping the same one. <laughs> Mine, they would take a whole page and just stamp in the middle. And it's like, what are you doing? You realize that I have limited space. Why are, why are you like taking up a whole page with one? Cool. Uh, Sada, you want to start us off by talking about a little about what to expect on the community while you're on trip? Yeah, so you guys, the people who joined already and people who are going to join are the main reason why I keep doing this job. Uh, so inspiring to every trip to meet people from all over the world. And it's something that we really, really care, of course, and we pay attention to the people who come on trips with us. That's also why when you go on the apply page, we ask you to schedule a chat either with me or Spencer. And so everyone goes through this chat with us and it's a moment where you can ask us all the questions that you have and we can get a vibe and imagine if you're going to get along, if you're going to get along with the people who are going to be on trip. And we want to know more about your project. We want to make sure that everyone has a concrete project to work on while on trip. Uh, usually we are not looking for people on vacation because it's a professional program. Of course, we, we do it from a beach in Thailand or in Brazil or from Taipei, but we still are, we are still working and get this stuff done. So that's how we select our community. And usually people ask me quite often, how is the group? Like who are I gonna meet while traveling with you? And each group is very different and it's the diversity that I love of the groups, but in general, you can expect to meet in between 15, 25 people. Now in Brazil, there are 30 people um gender balance i'd say it's usually half guys half girls um the core age is like late 20s mid 30s but we are always gonna have younger people and much older people i hope that laurie and Fawn are not connected but like we have people in their 60s even almost 60. um one of the best thing is that it's a very diverse background so you don't expect because we are hacker paradise but not everyone is a tech person 
like jazz, I mean, jazz, you're kind of tech, but you're creative tech. Like we have people, in, we have lawyers, we have translators, we have marketing experts, we have people working at universities, writing papers. Doug is finishing his paper tonight. Uh, so it's a very, very diverse community. We come from all over the world. So US are well represented, but also people from Europe, Hong Kong, India, Australia. I was counting just before this webinar, we have 11 different nationalities in the group here in Taipei. Uh, like we have Amur, she's from Mongolia. I've never met anyone from Mongolia before meeting her in, in Thailand. Um, so there are very unique people. Everyone is pretty unique. Um, we support each other. We inspire each other for sure. And we are, we are accountable for each other. I think that's one of the best thing. Like I also started doing, thanks to the support of the community, I started doing things that I would never expect to develop in, in my life. So that's really this family feeling uh, that it's unique on each trip and it's real. And I think, yeah, Jess and Spencer, you can say even more, you've been doing this even for longer. I mean, I would agree with you that like the reason I keep coming back is because of the people in the community. And that's the number one thing we hear from our participants as well. There's people who say, oh, I'm gonna come just for a month and then meet the people and they're like, before they leave the trip, their first thing is I'm going to sign up for the next one because these people I've met are incredible. I'm going to keep going with them. We write that on the website. We say that we are at the, we are. an addiction. <laughs> um, uh, the, I think the reason HP was started was because people wanted community. It was, okay, well, if we're going to travel, but we don't want to be alone, how do we recreate some of the social structure we had back at home? And so the idea was let's create this community on the road of these really interesting, motivated, cool professionals um, so that whether we're in Thailand or London or South Africa or New York or wherever you might be on your own travels or with Hacker Paradise, you still have that, that sense of community. So I remember when I uh, first arrived that I, I walked in the first day, I was super nervous. Uh, didn't know what I was doing and Lori, who I know you guys know, just walked over and hugged me and said, welcome to the group. We're so excited to have you. And that's the vibe that you get when you come. The group is warm and welcome and opening or welcoming and open to everybody. I would say as well, not only do you meet people and get to know them very well on the trip, but these are relationships that last after the trip. I've been doing this now for three years and some of my best friends, most of my best friends these days are people that I've met and traveled with through Hacker Paradise. Um, they're people that when I travel on my own, I go see them. And the cool side effect of that is if I'm traveling on my own and say, oh, I've got two weeks, where should I go? I say, oh, we've got a couple of Hacker Paradise alumni, good friends of mine that live in Romania. So I'm going to go there. And then for like three weeks of vacation, I'm there with people that are from there. I did the same thing in New Zealand and did a road trip in New Zealand from someone who was from there, who was our friend from Hacker Paradise. So there's this whole international network that you have as well that is really, really valuable. Um, we've had people not only be friends, we've had people start companies together and collaborate on things. We've also had people date uh, get married and uh, have children. So yeah, we have one Hacker Paradise baby. Uh, people, I call myself <laughs> the, the cutest baby ever. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, and I take all the credit for it because I interviewed both the people and let them on the trip and then helped set them up on their first date and now they're married and have a child. So uh, I'm really working really hard to get a Bachelor spinoff. We can be like Bachelor slash Hacker Paradise version and uh, uh, maybe some of you will join us when we have that version, <laughs> if it ever happens, which it won't, but it would be really If it's fun. on the beach, I'm going to join. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last thing I'll say is I'll reiterate what Sada said. One of my favorite parts about the community is you set goals and people hold you accountable to them. And then people also volunteer to help you. So I am not a marketing person, but for Hacker Paradise, we have to do marketing. And so... Sometimes I have a question about marketing that I want to just get answered by someone who's in the room and there are marketing people who are here on trips with us that I can ask. So I'll just say, hey, I have this question for you. Can you sit down with me for five or 10 minutes and just explain this concept to me? And people are always super helpful and willing to um, help point you in the right direction, whether it's something that's business oriented or, or personal or something fun. The group here is really good about helping and volunteering to help you out in any way that you need. 
Yeah, we are all people with purpose. So every day you're just happy to wake up and go to the co-working space, meet the others and see what interesting conversation we're going to have today. It's very like I find compared to my life before HP, it's much more dynamic and much more like inspiring. And even for small things, I was a lazy ass. Now I'm going to the gym because it's six of us going to the gym all together. And I started meditating because everyone said, you should try, you should try. And you have this support that I never felt before at the same level. So it's great. I, um, oh my God, I just blanked out. Um, oh yeah. Whenever I am working from Austin, I'm typically working from home or coffee shops and, um, home and coffee shops are great because I can be lazy at home, but then maybe I'm not as productive or I'm more productive in coffee shops, but then I'm still kind of lonely. Like if I have to get up and go get something, I don't want to leave my computer there and just that whole awkward situation. But when I'm with Hacker Paradise, I actually find that I'm more productive in the time that I'm working because I look around and everyone around me is passionate about what they do and uh, working hard and collaborating and doing all these things. Um, or they're taking a break, but it's an effective break where you're getting to know each other and you're having a coffee over a great conversation and then you head back to work and then get focused again. Um, I, this is, I guess, a little off topic, but I also find that, um, eh, I'll talk about it later, but yeah, so the community is super passionate about not only, um, professional stuff. So like people work remotely full time, um, for companies, people are freelancers and solopreneurs like myself. People are working on uh, projects like writing memoirs or learning to code or um, doing professional video projects while they're there. Um, so there's all different kinds of professions, whether it's um, more creative, more as you said. Actually, we had someone in Bali who um, was a sci-fi romance novelist which was super interesting. <laughs> um, and she gave a workshop on how to write a romantic scene and stuff like that. And it was super fun. And, um, so we have a really big variety of people, but that variety and that passion behind it all really keeps me motivated to work as well, but then also have fun and get to know everyone. I feel like the people that come are really interesting and diverse and like their own background as well. Like mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh, hey, I run a tech company and I used to write romance novels. And then on the side, I do like art sculpture exhibits. And it's like, how do yeah. you do all of those things? But everyone just has like lots of cool, interesting things about themselves. We had someone in Thailand that um, surprised me every day with his stories about how he used to own and run a music festival. And he lives on a boat when he's in the UK, when he's at home. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> every one of his shirts he wears relates to the activities of the day. And he does it on purpose. Like they all say, <laughs> and he's just so interesting and fun in a surprising way, just in a way that every conversation you had, this was everybody, literally everybody. Um, but um, just as an example, it was just surprising stuff that he did back home that uh, he sailed across the Atlantic like three times or something. Um, he has all these pictures of him with a big beard because he was sailing for oh um, months. <laughs> so it was like super interesting um, and really cool. And uh, to get to know people with very different backgrounds than myself. Yeah, so. he's coming to Sicily if you guys want to meet him. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Maybe we'll have him set up a, a trip for us in HP. A boat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the, the Wi-Fi will be good enough. <laughs> I, don't know. I think he got that part figured out because, yeah, oh, well. I guess you would have a related to. related topic. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it later, yeah. Uh, cool. Well, I want to give a, just a brief little spiel about what is Hacker Paradise. So a lot of people say, this sounds really cool, but like, in concepts or in pictures or what you guys are saying sounds kind of cool, but like what the hell is it really at the end of the day? So just to sum up a little bit of what it, what it is. So we're a diverse global community united a lot by our passion and our ethos rather than industry. So it's not that we're all in tech or not that we're all in a creative field. We more have the like-minded quality that we're like open-minded and wanting to have adventure and explore the world type of stuff. Um, 
I like to say that as a organization, we're pro equality, pro love, pro kindness, and pro inclusivity. And we mean that all the way through from uh, how we work internally to how the culture is when you're on a trip and all of that type of stuff. Um, from our perspective, uh, Hacker Paradise really handles three big things. So one of them is logistics. So uh, if you are traveling on your own and sometimes you're booking Airbnbs or hotels and then the Wi-Fi messes up and then you just text the me. water turns off. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. So we handle that. We book all that stuff in advance and do a lot of the pre-planning to make sure that you don't have to do any of that. You just like buy your plane ticket and show up. And then when you're there, we also have facilitators like Sada and me who are there to solve problems for you. So if the Wi-Fi is out, you just message and say, hey, the Wi-Fi is out. Uh, I'm going to go to the office to work, but can you try to have it fixed by the time I get home? So we handle a lot of that stuff so that you can focus on what's more important to you, which would be getting your work done and then enjoying your adventure instead of focusing on why is the Wi-Fi not working. The second big thing that we offer uh, that we've talked about quite a bit in the, the last couple minutes is community. So we provide a community of awesome people so that you don't have to do this or go through any part of this alone. And like I said, this extends even after your trip where not only do you meet the people you're on trip, but after that you're absorbed into the network we have, the Hacker Paradise network that has 650 people these days, something like that. It's always growing as we still have people coming, but it's a, a big network of people that have never even met each other in person, but we'll be like, yeah, you can stay on my couch when you're visiting in Hong Kong. And oh, we have like common interests. Let's work on this project together. And all sorts of stuff come out of that that is uh, uh, really, really cool and for a lot of people unexpected. Uh, the last thing that we do and provide a lot of, which we'll get into a bit more in detail, but we provide a lot of on-trip programming and that can be things that are professional development, stuff that are cultural, stuff that is social. Right now, I'm planning ahead for the Seoul trip that starts on May 12th, so I can give you a couple examples just of things that I know that I'm planning right now. Sada and I actually ran that trip last year, which was great, though so she has to leave me this year to run the Italy trip because she's Italian and will run that better than anybody else. Um, but for example, for professional development stuff, we had workshops, workshops on marketing and design. We taught people, I taught people, um, how to read and write Korean, because that's what I used to do professionally before I came out and did this. Uh, we had networking events with startups in the area. For social activities, we had a lot of nights at Korean karaoke, which if you have not done is quite the experience. It's the best. And the thing that you have to remember if you go to Korean karaoke is you need a tambourine. Without a tambourine, it's not Korean karaoke. Someone's on the mic singing and someone next to them is banging a tambourine. You um, can DM also... me. I'm going to send you videos of Spencer with a tambourine. <laughs> Please do not send videos of me with a tambourine. I was very enthusiastic as I was teaching everyone about how to tambourine correctly. Um, we also have weekly potlucks. We hike to mountains. Um, people last year and this year are going to take side trips to surrounding cities. So there's a lot of social stuff that goes on. Culturally as well, we try to do a lot of things so you can connect with the actual cultural and not just be in the bubble of us international people that aren't Korean in this specific location. So for example, we traveled up to the North Korean border and we went to uh, an event where we could learn from North Korean defectors who had come down into South Korea. Um, we had people who went to a mountain temple and they were experiencing being a Buddhist monk for a day. Um, we even took people to the Korean sauna, which if you haven't gone is a very cultural experience. Yeah, uh, get a scrub. Yeah, you get scrubbed down and everything and it is just really a fun to take a group there. So we plan a lot of that on trip programming as well and facilitate that. So you're not spending your day saying, oh man, what am I supposed to do here in this location? you know, we plan a lot of that for you so that you say, oh, looks like this is happening this weekend, I'm gonna go, and then have like a really cool local experience with it. Yeah, you just need to show up or plan an activity if you feel like. Yeah. And involve the group. So do you wanna talk a little bit about what's included in the price? Yeah, of course, all this sounds amazing. <laughs> it also has a price. But I really want to go through everything that it's included so you can also do some math and compare how much you spend at home and you see that the difference, like depending on you, where you live, but it's not that different. So 
So we have, you're always gonna have your private room. If you want to share the room, it's also a possibility uh, that cuts down the price too. But usually like if you want your private room, it's always gonna be there for you. We don't go to hostels or to cheap hotels. We have apartments, like two or three bedroom apartment. Uh, sometimes we have studios. We always ask you what you prefer. We, we let you choose what you prefer. Most of the times you have your private bathroom, but I know that it's something that people really want. I also love having my private bathroom, but yeah, that's also something that we offer. And then you always partner with a co-working space. Uh, most of the time it's 24 hours access, like this one, because some time zone is real. So sometimes maybe you have to work till night. If you come to Asia, you need to work US or European hours. So co-working space is also included and that's also a great uh, local contact that we have. Last night we just had a networking event here with local entrepreneurs. It's always very interesting mingling with them. We give you a SIM card with data, so you're gonna have internet in the apartment, internet in the co-working, and data on your phone for your Instagram stories, so you're always connected. Um, we pay for Monday lunches, that's part of our program, so Monday lunch is always included and it's a nice moment. No one miss my Monday lunch, it's free food for everyone. Um, you have two facilitators on trip. Now we are just talking about me and Spencer, but we both have colleagues like Brian is coming to Sicily with me. Vanessa is gonna be in South Korea with Spencer. Um, we are one in charge of logistic, uh, which is me and Spencer. So when you have problems about housing, the Wi-Fi is not working or something happens, the Wi-Fi always works. Cancel what I just said. <laughs> you can just come <laughs> to us and we are gonna be there to fix the problems. And then we have the other facilitator who is in charge of um, weekly activities. Some of them Spencer cover, but then we have also professional development. We are not here just to explore the country, but we have goal setting sessions. We have reciprocity where we sit down together and we ask for help and we volunteer to help the others. We share our skills. We have workshops, we have talks. There is a lot of sharing. As I said, we have very different backgrounds. So we have a lot to learn from the others and also to teach the others. Um, it's what our, our professional program is focused on that. Uh, we have networking events on each event where we go. As like I said, last night we were here with another 30 entrepreneurs from Taipei with very interesting projects. Uh, and then the alumni network that we already mentioned, but it's very, very powerful. So we run our trips through Slack. And once you finish your trip, we are gonna add you to the alumni Slack. And there you, you can connect with over 700 people now. We join our trips. And we already mentioned there is the Where I Am channel, the Couchsurfing channel, and it's this active community and people hire other people and there is this trust just because we lived kind of the same experience and we were part of the same program. By default, you trust these people more than a random contractor on what you find online. So it's very, very powerful. So your money are well spent. <laughs> A lot of and people ask. At least cleaning once a week. That's something that I always forget to mention, but it's actually important. So you don't need to waste time cleaning up your stuff. It's a lesson we learned two and a half years ago. We, when we were first starting, we did not include cleaning because we just didn't realize that that was important. And then yeah. I remember there was one trip where like one of the houses was just, I was it was so hard to walk into and we're like, nope, we got to include cleaning every time. So now it's just part of the program. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. At least once a week. Sometimes it's every two days. It's kind of annoying. It's too clean, but <laughs> yeah. I think the question people ask me about programming as well and like what's included is they're just kind of like, Oh, do I have time off to do my own stuff or am I always on programming? All the stuff you opt into, you don't have to go to any of it that most people do because it's an awesome part of the program. So you can kind of like make your own schedule about what you want to go to. And then there's a lot of free time for you to explore things alone or with other people that you plan that might be separate. Um, the big takeaway is you won't be bored. You won't be like, oh, I have nothing to do today. I'm going to sit at home and watch Netflix all day. Usually like on the weekend, there's five activities going on and you can't yeah. do all of them. And so you have to choose which one you're most interested in. Yeah. And something that I think is very important to mention is that we always invite everyone to join, but there is never pressure of joining everything. And if one day or a weekend you just want to be introverted and watch Netflix all weekend, that's totally fine. Like we are not gonna come and take you out of your room. Like you are still in charge of your own schedule. There is a lot going on, but if you don't want to join something, it's totally fine. 
uh, no pressure. I'm, I mean, I'm always gonna ask you <laughs> uh, if everything is okay. I always worry that people are not okay, but I, it's totally normal. And we understand that people have different schedules. So pre no pressure to join everything. Cool. Jess, you want to tell a little bit about your experience because you're the alumni on the panel, the person who has come to multiple trips. So tell us a little bit about why you've come to Hacker Paradise. Yeah, so a lot of it is probably stuff we already discussed, but I can kind of give my own personal take on it. So I guess, first of all, ever since I went on my first trip, I feel like I, I feel bad to tell my boyfriend this, but I feel like my best self when I'm on a Hacker Paradise trip. <laughs> Um, Poor because Alex. I know, <laughs> um, because as you said, um, as we were talking about, people are passionate. So the passion kind of wears off, I'm, not wears off, but like inspires me. Um, and I tend to be more extroverted. So I actually like and join all the activities. I never, I don't think I've ever sat down and this is a pro for me, other people it's different, but I don't think I've ever sat down and like watched Netflix on a trip because I'm just out doing stuff and then I go home and I sleep and then I wake up and I go do stuff. I'm always like on the Slack channels, like, hey, who wants to grab breakfast? Let's go, come on, like fresh day, let's do it down to the, the end of the night. Um, and I just love that. Um, but then there are people that are more introverted um, that I talk to a lot that actually like kind of getting invited to everything because then they feel more encouraged to break out of their shell when they want to. And then they go home and do their own thing when they want to do that as well. So it's cool having that balance between people. Um, so, okay. So um, another part beyond feeling like my best self is that, as you mentioned, logistics are all sorted for you. Before Hacker Paradise, I'd never actually traveled alone I had always had a buddy with me and I realized as an extroverted person Spencer as you said after five days of alone you're just like <laughs> right. I traveled for five days or a week or so alone be pre my first trip like right before Porto um I talked to every stranger I possibly could <laughs> that was speaking English <laughs> I was like that annoying one uh, but uh, once I got to uh, Portugal, I remember Izzy was there. Izzy was my first facilitator. Um, he welcomed me. He uh, brought me to my Airbnb that we had Airbnbs in Portugal. Um, and then we went back to where the hub was, where everyone was meeting when they got there. And then we just hung out all day and met everyone one by one. I was one of the first people there. So I got to know everyone's names like right off the bat um because when people show up one by one it's it was a little easier for me but you will learn everybody's names um because you are going to become friends with everyone and um so that don't worry about that but um so the logistics were all sorted for me um i didn't have to worry about anything before i showed up i literally was at home until the day i left i mean as a first time like solo it it doesn't feel solo because you have a community right there but um as my first time doing this on my own i was a little nervous but then i feel so at ease and comfortable when i show up every time um so okay so in addition to logistics which that was kind of partially logistics partially just being awesome there but um so speaking of like friends in the community <laughs> um you really do make close friends with everybody um i find that you get in deep with people um, or at least get to know everyone on some level um, depending on um, you know depending on if you bond more with someone that might happen but you're going to get to know everybody you're going to become friends with everybody um, we even have a program which no one mentioned yet but it's one of my favorite parts uh, donut buddies um, yeah. on the slack channel it matches everyone up with a partner randomly every week so it may be someone you're really close with. It may be someone you hadn't talked to yet the first week, yeah. um, but you grab coffee or go skydiving or surfing or paragliding eat a donut or parag paragliding, like all these different things. Everyone tries to one up each other in their donut buddy dates, but, um, but you could just get coffee, whatever works for you and just get to know each other. Um, maybe it's someone you would have never met in, um, you know, the, you know the previous place you lived or um this is the real world so i don't want to say the real world but yeah um, it's something that i feel every time 
I, I'm on a trip, it's like I realized how I would never, I would have never met all these people if I was just staying at home and not even traveling on your own because I also traveled alone and it's easy to go grab a beer with someone, but then the day after they leave or you right. move somewhere else. And right. here you have a community that stays with you for, a, for an extended period of time and then it stays alive. It's an hour yeah. after the trip. Yeah. So it's, everything is deeper and so real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it really feels that way. It's almost like summer camp or living in the dorms if you went to college, like dorm college life or something like that. But for adults and remote workers, it's kind of awesome. Um, you do everything. I listed a bunch of different things we did like um, on various trips that are, you know, you have your donut buddy conversations. In Thailand, we played guitar and sang together on the beach at night. Um, I've played board games. I've gone to glaciers in Patagonia and like had a 10 course meal on a boat with Lori. Like the two of us went to Patagonia together for a weekend. Um, we've gone on little road trips. Um, wine tasting <laughs> I know wine tastings in multiple <laughs> countries um went to um Gili Air which is an island off of Bali where the entire group went everybody went it was not mandatory it was not an official thing it was just hey let's go on a side trip together said one person and then everyone was like yeah I don't want to be left out yeah I want to go I want to go so we all went and we all stayed in the same hotel um, so we could like be close together <laughs> and like hung out on the beach and just chilled. And it was a really great bonding experience um, that just was so real and natural because it wasn't forced upon us. It was just something we wanted to do. Um, and then as you mentioned, so there's the alumni network, which sounds so formal, but really it's just, you have all these new friends. Um, and then like, for instance, I grew up outside of New York. So whenever I go back um, and I go into the city, I post, um, I'm in the New York City channel on Slack, even though I don't live there, but um, I post in there and I post on the Where Am I channel that I'll be there. And last time I was there, we had like 10 different Hacker Paradise alum meet up, half of whom I had met in person and half of whom I had not, but everyone kind of knew each other in some way like they were on a trip here and they were on a trip there um so it was really cool to get to know other people too um i had someone come to austin and work out of my co-working space with me for a month i just had a friend here last weekend that we went out to drink the hacker paradise alum um there's a few people coming to austin later this month we're already planning a get together so um so even socially it continues on um there's a whatsapp group from my bali trip and people are planning to go to Canada, to go to Calgary for, what's it called, Derby Day, something like that. It's like some big party in Calgary where one person was from. They're all planning to go there in June or July. And then they're all planning to go. I can't come to these things. I have weddings, but um, <laughs> I want to go. But they're all planning to go to um, uh, Oktoberfest in Germany together, too, because uh, one person was from Germany. And so they, it's just cool to see that everyone's still planning all these trips and got so close. In addition to that, I've gotten jobs, freelance jobs out of the alumni, um, people I've met in Buenos Aires. Um, she, uh, Ashley gave me an opportunity to meet with her boss and do some design work for her company. Um, I have gotten feedback on the trips um of design feedback from fellow designers um hey can you look at this real quick how does this look in thailand um beth inspired me to raise my rates which was like super important um and really cool of her to just be that little push i needed of something i was thinking about for a while um and then on the flip side i've given help to people with like adobe illustrator sketch or something on the trips as well um so that's cool um let's see i'm like going through all this stuff and then i even gave i used to do marketing so i even gave marketing advice to someone that had as a startup um just from my own personal experiences marketing pr advice so um and then i um yeah so it's just like cool you can get clients out of it you can start projects together like people have started companies together or even just fun side projects 
Um, and there's a lot of cool ones out there to check out. Um, uh, speaking of that kind of stuff, um, the professional growth personally is awesome as well. So like, um, I've, uh, Spencer and Sada mentioned we have talks and workshops and goal setting. And then we have something called reciprocity ring, which is kind of like you ask each other for help or something you need help with, whether it's like, I need someone to go on a wine tour with me to like, I need someone to develop my WordPress site for me. It can really be things you yeah. need help with personal or professional. Um, but regarding talks and workshops, I actually gave a talk on four of my five trips um I think or three of my five trips and on a bunch of them and I actually even put that on my resume to show um that I am a subject matter expert they were about design that I'm a subject matter expert and that I feel comfortable talking in front of a group so um so that actually went right on my resume which is really cool plus if they ask what Hacker Paradise is it's a cool talking point too um <laughs> <laughs> bonus points um uh, I actually am a huge goal setting nerd, so I love goals and um, I set my own goals personally anyway. So this is cool to be able to share that with everybody and keep each other accountable in that sense and kind of share how you're doing and what you need help with and make sure that everyone's kind of collaborating together too. Um, meetups. I'm also a meetup nerd. I'm just a big nerd. Um, I go to, for instance, uh, Creative Mornings here in Austin every month that I'm here, uh, which is a really cool global meetup. If you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. I'm not affiliated with them, but um, we went in Cape Town. So I brought a bunch of people to the Creative Mornings in Cape Town since it's a global meetup. And it was super cool to even see something I do in Austin all the time in a different, completely different setting um, about different topics that I wouldn't have heard before with people that really enjoyed it. And it was cool to share something that I love that was related to it or to like creativity and, and um, collaboration and everything with other people. Um, and then I also always do personal projects and I suggest to people if they ask me, um, find something, a personal goal for the trip. So I make a video every trip, just capturing our experience. Um, they're all on YouTube if you're interested in seeing them. Um, yeah, just and it's, <laughs> it's just, it's a fun project for me personally, I'm because I've realized, I've realized I really like, um, if you need me to send it to you, I can, I've realized I really like, um, video editing and filming and stuff. And then it also just captures the experience and is a cool piece of memorabilia for everyone else and, on the trip. Um, and then in Porto, I also made Portugal related icons. Um, Dale actually started while he was traveling. He's a former facilitator. He started um, illustrating travel, travel problems. I forget the official name, but then he's turned it into multiple books and it's like his career. And it's super cool to see one of his projects he started while traveling become um, his career. Is that it? You said Jen. You called me Jen. <laughs> oh, because Jen is here. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, okay, one more point. The other cool part of it is you are exploring new cultures, as we said, but it feels like you're less of a tourist and more like a local because you're there for, um, even if it's two weeks or four weeks or eight weeks or however long, you kind of feel like you're settled in, you're working, you're going to a co-working space, you're checking out coffee shops, you have friends. Um, so it feels less of like a rushing around tourists and see all the things to do. Um, and then it's more of like I'm settling in and I'm living here experience, which is really cool. Um, pro tip I will say is make sure you actually do go out and explore um, and not work all, all the time. I would encourage you to work, but make sure you're kind of finding that work-life balance and we help each other maintain that. But um, you want to also have a little bit of that tourist side where you are doing stuff like hiking Table Mountain, maybe one morning before you go into the co-working space, which is what I did, um, or um, taking a Saturday and going on a side trip or something. So anyway, those are all my favorite parts of um, being on trips and kind of why I feel like my best self on these trips. And um, 
And I know it sounded very like logisticky, but it was, it's just really cool points for me of why I keep coming back. Yeah, I was also thinking, I don't know if it happens the same um, to you guys, but sometimes we, our friends from childhood, childhood are always going to be there and they're always going to be the people who saw us growing. But I don't know if it's the same for you, but I, all my friends are getting married, maybe having kids, and I kind of was missing at home um, people who were seeing life like me and with this thing that really wanted to travel, but also get stuff done and see what and like it's what I find in HP like people who can really understand uh, understand me and we can travel together and get stuff done together so I find this support that I was not having at home anymore but like I still have my friends at home and we are we chat every day just different moments of our lives and that's really nice you also reminded me that one of the reasons I joined and um in the first place was that it kind of felt like Hacker Paradise enabled me to travel more than I would have otherwise been able to because I'm working as I'm traveling, because I have that community, because the logistics are sorted out. Um, it kind of allowed me to, you know, you're not just taking, like I don't get paid if I don't work, right? I'm a freelancer. So if I take off four weeks or one week or eight weeks or whatever, then I won't be able to make any money. So it's cool to be able to do both at the same time for me. That was a big pro um, because it kind of enabled me to balance out life a little bit and be able to work and travel together um, made it so I could actually travel. That was cool. cool. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. Yeah, this is just to show you guys that we are real. (laughs) We are people. (laughs) Uh, we live like this. This this could be you uh, now if you already have a remote job or in a few months or next year. Uh, me and Spencer are here. Um, you can schedule a chat with us. It's the process to join a trip. Uh, we have a bunch of time slots open in different time zones. <laughs> so you can go to the website and click apply and just schedule a chat with us. If you don't find any time zone available, just send us an email at hello at agroparadise.org and we can figure out a time. We, it's just a chat over WhatsApp uh, or Skype if you still have your login. Um, even if you don't have a remote job yet, we can already chat, we can give you some tips and we can already accept you for future trips and we are already in contact. You can ask us about future trips, whatever you guys want. And then so as soon as you have your remote job, or you want to take some time off to focus on a, on a personal project. It's something that also people do. They're on a sabbatical and they are writing a book or becoming a freelancer. There are many things that you can do on the road. So just, yeah, schedule a chat with us. Uh, we are real. Join us. And now Spencer and I are on a competition because I'm running the Italy trip and Spencer is running the Seoul trip, which is, it's my home country. And I know that South Korea is for Spencer is also is kind of, home country more or less base, yes uh, so yeah we have a competition going on so join my trip <laughs> yeah uh seoul is going to be so much better than the italy trip that's my plug yeah both of them start yeah. when may may 12th gelat yeah we start on may 12th if you are i mean i'm gonna spend my days eating gelato and going to the beach and chatting with you guys and we're I simultaneously on hacker on Hacker Paris trips, I feel super fit and also that I eat more ice cream than I ever eat. Right? There is always ice cream. <laughs> or gelato. Um, gelato. We, should put, the, we should put that in our marketing material. <laughs> just the local food. I'll eat whatever the local food is and kind of not worry about like, oh, like this may have cheese on it. Because I'm like walking around and as you said, people encourage you to exercise in the workout channel and on Slack and whatever and um, you have those workout buddies or just you just walking around more than I do in working from home lifestyle is, <laughs> is yeah, makes me feel better. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, that's the, that's the gist of the, the spiel that we wanted to give in the presentation we had prepared. It's not really a presentation. We mostly just chatted and told stories, but, uh, that is the bit that we had prepared. So, We'll start to go through now. We've been answering a couple questions in the chat as we've been going. Um, Jess, someone said that it's Calgary Stampede. 
is that's it i uh, yes i know it's like it's like western themed or something i don't know i feel like they can't answer me right now but um yes that's what it was um, but we'll go through the Q, the answer or the questions that are in Q and A. And for people who have more questions, you can put them into the Q and A, and, and we'll uh, keep responding to them. So maybe we just go one at a time and pick a question that maybe you want to answer and take it, and then we'll we'll switch. So I guess uh, I can I can go first. Um, I'll take the one. How is it possible to get or start a remote work during Hacker Paradise, or how possible is it as an intermediate or senior front end developer? So, our recommendation is always to find a job before you come and join us, or have a plan to be getting a job as you come and join us. Whether you're like working on a skill set to get you to that place, we do have people that find work when they're with us, whether it's from someone else on the trip, or they collaborate with someone, or just normal ways that they find work they do it while they happen to be with us but my recommendation is always to, to just try to find something before you come that being said it's not uncommon for people to find some sort of uh, new project through like a connection with someone on the trip while they're on the trip cool. Should I have I an answer to the next one. okay go okay are the trips done together as a cohort or are people always coming and going so one of the things that attracted me to Hacker Paradise over some other programs is that it's kind of both-ish, but um, so um, the groups are, so the trip might be four weeks or eight weeks or um, even sometimes 12, I don't know your guys' plans for the future, but um, <laughs> let's say a trip is four weeks uh, or eight weeks. The majority of people may or may not come for the full time. So in that sense, it feels like maybe a cohort, but you can come for four weeks out of the eight weeks, for instance, you can come in, I don't know if they're encouraging this or not, but you can come in like the middle of it. And one cool thing, cause I did that in Buenos Aires, it was an eight week program and I came the second four weeks. Um, and I was like a little nervous that people would all be best friends and I wasn't going to be able to like friend anyone because I was the late comer, but I was totally wrong. Like everyone was super welcoming. Um, and I jumped right in, befriended everyone. Plus other people were coming at the same time I came too. So I wasn't even alone in that sense. So, um, so it's kind of a mix between both where people may go for the whole time and then maybe go from trip to trip, but you don't have to, you can come for a part of one trip and then a part of another trip. Um, whenever your schedule works, like I come back to Austin most of the time and then pop back out into the trips again. So it's not like you have to continue on for a year or something like that. Is that cool with you guys? Is that good? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would just, I would just say that, uh, if you do sign up for longer time, you get a cheaper rate. So that's the big thing. <laughs> I'm going to go for three, three months or six months. Yeah, and most of the people come back, like Lori did 11 trips in the past three years. Uh, which, which, yeah. which, like, is not 11 months. That's 11 trips that are, like, yeah. four weeks. Eight, eight weeks, weeks, right. Eight weeks. One of them was 12 weeks, right? The Porto one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Gonna yeah we've, 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 had we've had people spend over a year with us, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, Sada. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the next one? Are there any workers who work with the company with the opposite time zone? What does the experience look like? Uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely have uh, either employees of companies that are on the other side of the world or freelancers with clients on the other side of the world. Uh, it means that like in places like, like here in Asia is usually the trickiest one. Um, but usually you're not alone. Like here at the co-working now, there are still two people left, but we were seven of us till one hour ago. It's 1 a.m. here now. So usually like we have a late co-working club. Um, you're never going to be the only one working till late if you have to. And the cool part that I'm actually jealous because they start working maybe in the afternoon, but they have always the late morning and lunch and early afternoon free. So they always do the cool stuff. Uh, and then we arrive working a little bit late, but we always overlap. Like you're always going to have a moment in the co-working space where we are all together. 
And we try to plan the activities in a way that works for everyone. So the calendar is not set in stone. We are flexible. We try to figure out the best timing. Of course, like it can, it can be a pain in the ass, but it's shared with other people around you. So you, I'm pretty sure they have more fun than I have at 9 a.m. in the co-working space. <laughs> So, yeah. I have something to add to that too as a freelancer who works only with companies in the US um, I mostly I tell them I'm very transparent with my clients and I tell them that I'll be working primarily in my local countries um, like if I'm in Thailand or wherever those business hours but that I can be flexible for meetings outside of the business hours like traditional business hours if they need um, so that way I, I can take a meeting at night here and there, but they realized, and I realized that let's say they gave me feedback on a project by end of their day, it's while I'm sleeping. So then I wake up and I can make all the edits to the project by the time they wake up in the morning. So we're actually more efficient and have faster timelines, which they really enjoy. Um, as long as you're thorough in emails or on your calls and stuff. So you don't have a lot of back and forth questions. So I've kind of locked it down with my clients so that we actually are more efficient. While I'm yeah. And like, like right now, this is, I mean, Asia and Spencer is in Latin America with the rest of it, Acker Paradise team. And in, actually I really enjoy having my Slack with zero notification during the day because I, I can just be productive and work on my stuff. And then they wake up and Slack is more active, but they also know that it's late night for me, so they don't expect me to answer right away. Like, I wake up and have 10 messages from Sada that are just waiting for me. I, like, as I'm eating breakfast, I'm trying to read through all the high priority stuff she sent me over the day. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's not only a disadvantage to work on a different time zone. There are many good points too. Yeah. Cool, I can take the next one. Arthur asks, what are the biggest differences, improvements, fun quirks between you and another company like Remote Cheer? So yeah, there's other companies like us in the space, though I do like to say that we were the first that came around. Um, but uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of differences. So some of them I think are like biz ops type differences and some of them are community differences and things that make us unique as a company and as a community. So a couple of the logistical ones is uh, some companies are quite big. We're more of a boutique option. So if like you have a problem or you have a question, instead of going to like customer service and going through red tape and all that stuff, you just walk across the room and talk to Sada or you talk to me. Like, you know us, we're your friends. Yeah, so, we are also the one replying to the emails. So There's uh, 10 of us. So it's funny, I'll have people that like write me on Facebook and I'll respond and they ask for an email address and then they write to us an email and they say, oh, I talked to your like marketing director on Facebook and like now I'm emailing you here. And it's like, it's, it's all me. Like it's, it's, me. <laughs> it's all, it's all us. So that's one thing, uh, like you'll get to know us very well. The people of the company you'll know very well. Um, we're extremely flexible for when you want to come. You don't have to commit for a year. You don't have to commit for four months. It's kind of like a pick your own adventure. You choose where you want to go, when you want to come, and we help make that happen for you. I think our community uh, and the people who self-select into our community are something that set us apart and make us unique. A lot of our people are not just people who have just found a remote job just because they want to travel though we have some of those most of the people are people who have like careers that they've been doing for years and they love them and they have taken to them to a place where they can work remotely so it's not as much of uh, like 20 year olds on a gap year from college like that's not the vibe of our group that's not really the community we have it's more of uh, remote working professionals who are awesome experts in their fields um, I think our alumni network sets us apart. We've talked about that a lot, but I think that's a huge perk that most people don't really think about when they're thinking about a trip or where they're coming. But our network has so many awesome, great people who are so happy to help you um, that having that there is something that lots of people say is the biggest benefit they've gotten out of Hacker Paradise. And they tell me that I should emphasize it more. So I have today. Um, other thoughts, Sada, about something that sets us apart and makes us unique? Um, no, basically when we never join any other program, we, so it's always a, a tricky answer. We don't want to 
talk about things that we, we don't know, but yeah, we just put all our passion to make HP works the way we want. So, and it's us, I think, but we're very authentic. Um, and people keep coming back. So I think that's, that's the biggest sign of an healthy company. Yeah, we, I mean, we don't have people. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, we don't have people lots, lots of time on any trip you go on, about 50% of the people are like return participants yeah. who then sign up for another trip because they love it. And for us, that's like our sign of success and the sign that yeah. people love us is that we have so many loyal people who just love the program yeah. coming back. Yeah, it's not just a one-time thing and then it's over. It's something that is gonna stay with you. Yeah. So cheesy. Right. That is so true. <laughs> I was just a funny story, but I want to not take up everyone's time with funny stories. So, <laughs> just hold their separate webinar after this. To tell the funny <laughs> stories that we didn't have time for. Uh, Sada, is it your turn for one, or Jess? Jess, you can take whichever one you want. I it's Sarah's one about housing. Yeah, I can reply with one about housing. I always already said something, but um, when you travel with Hacker Paradise, what is the housing like? Uh, so as I said, it depends a lot on the location. It's going to be either a studio or a two-bedroom apartment or a three-bedroom apartment or a penthouse like we have now in Brazil and we're going to have one in Tel Aviv too. Uh, so you're going to have your private room, sometimes your private bathroom or it's going to be shared with maximum one other person. And then you're going to share the kitchen and the living room and the terrace, sometimes the pool with the other people in the apartment. Uh, we try to avoid hotels. It's very rare that we stay in hotel. Like, uh, yeah, and yeah, we always say, or do you travel stay in different places across the country? So usually we pick a location and we stay there for the entire time. And then like during the weekends we go out and we explore. Like the first weekend here in Taipei, in Taiwan, we went to Tainan, um, and we went all the group all together. And I think someone asked in the chat those trips are not included. And like, even me as facilitator, I'm gonna pay for those. So it's something that we plan all together, um, but are, are not included, but usually we, we try to make it cheap. Like we, we care about our money. We don't, we don't need to go to a five-star hotel. We, we try to find a balance depending on where we are to make it affordable for everyone. Um, so yeah, that's about housing, I guess. Cool. Jess, do you want to talk about the one about do you have apartments in your home country or do you sublet them while you're away? Since Sada and I have like put ourselves in storage and travel full time, but you're someone who pops yeah. in now. Um, so I've heard of both sides of this coin. So the question is, yeah, do you have apartments in your home countries or sublet them while you're away? Since I go um, a couple months here and there throughout the year, I still have my apartment in Austin. I also live with someone that I can't sublet with so um <laughs> um so uh yeah so i actually still have my apartment um but i'm going for shorter periods of time people that i know i've talked to a lot of different hacker paradise alums or people on the trips that go for let's say three months at a time or more will tend to sublet their apartments um once you're an alum you're in the slack channel now there's like this new channel I think where people are subletting it to each other even or exchanging houses and stuff like that which is really cool um so I've seen both sides so I don't sublet mine but other people do or people sell their houses or their cars um or just put them in storage for a while or lend them to a friend or it's really whatever works best for you I think um yeah so yeah I'd agree Everybody finds what works best for them in that scenario, but there's like the whole spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll take the exercise question. Sada, I'm going to make you take the medical emergencies question. You can tell Sada has a lot of stories, which we will not get into, but just know that she will go with you to the hospital if there's a medical. Yeah. So I'll take, what is it like getting exercise? Do people find gyms close to where they stay? Yes. So the group generally is really <laughs> workout friendly and so there's people that we usually help find a gym and then there's people who do all sorts of other activities and here we negotiate brazil, a discount we, we negotiate a group negotiate discount course. yep here in brazil we have uh yoga classes that people have opted into as well and are going to um 
and we have people who are surfing in the morning. We have people, we have a hiking channel for when people want to go hiking. There's a lot of like outdoor physical activities and then also like workout specific activities that people do. Again, it's opt in. If you're not interested and you don't have to do it, I can't do hot yoga. I sweat too much and then slip all over the place. It's a joke to watch me. So like I don't go to hot yoga and I go with other people and we go to the gym to work out. But we try to help facilitate some of that and then other people in the group will find activities they're interested in, suggest it to the group and then whoever wants to go signs up. Yeah. That's yeah, a side that. note that I think is cool is that it's also very group oriented and group facilitated. It's not just like HP facilitators telling you what to do. It's kind of like, hey guys, like I'm a participant and I found this gym and I want to go hiking or whatever. Let's do it. And then it's kind of like group led as well. Um, which is cool. Yeah. We have a Muay Thai group here in Taipei. Nice. So we had that in stinky. Thailand too. I only went once, but it was the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the gym here is not as stinky, but still. Sada, <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us about medical emergencies. What happens when there's a medical so, emergency? guys, <laughs> if you come on a trip with me, but I'm pretty sure it's the same on every other trip. Like, of course, sometimes it happens, and I had to. I went to the hospital with a participant in three different countries, actually three different continents. I was Croatia, Cape Town, and Taipei. Okay. No, we, we just we just care, and like you guys are gonna be our friends, and like you just do as it was a friend. Like uh, three weeks ago, I spent a couple of days at the hospital with a participant, and no, none of the time was something super. super no one was in danger of death or something, but. It's just nice to have someone there to help you take care of the logistic and like ask around uh, to the nurses or what is going on. Sometimes when you are in pain, you don't, know, you don't want to be there alone and deal with these things. So of course, always have a medical insurance. That's the thing that you can do to prevent any we drama. We require, and any... we require it. We require everyone to have yeah. some medical, international medical insurance in yeah. case something happens. Yeah, and there, uh, now I'm going to quote Jen, that is not Jess. <laughs> we have a Jen here, so I'm confusing the names, but that's why uh, Jen joined HP. Uh, she's a participant actually from Taipei, and she, was, she got food poisoning alone in Barcelona, and she said to herself that she, would, she didn't want to travel alone again, because when you are sick and you're alone, it sucks even more. So... Yeah, for any medical emergency, we are here. And you're going to take care of me if I'm sick. So, yeah, you're not going to be alone. So any medical emergency is just going to be taken care of. Yeah, but it's a community. Hospital. It's a community <laughs> vibe. So, like, we do some research before about, like, the hospitals in the area, yeah. pharmacies. Yeah, in the definitely. Area. We get, so we have some of that knowledge. And then when stuff happens, we we go with you. We're a community and we try to take care of each yeah. other. Yeah. yeah, we always research on the closest the best hospital in town, dentists and just general doctors. So when something happens, we don't need to do the research part of like, oh my God, where are we going? It's just, okay, we're going here. Um, yeah, we are there for that too. Yeah. The so last question. The last one? Yeah. Do you ever have performing artists in Hacker Paradise working on a show, text or rehearsal? Uh, yes. So we've had stand, I have, we had a stand-up comedian come with us once who was working a bit on their stand-up routine. Uh, we have a lot of different types of musicians that come with us. It's usually like they're a music, musician on the side. They have some other day job, but they'll be writing music or um, recording, actually. Uh, we've had people do rec recording of their music while they're with us. So there's a bunch of different people that do different types of stuff like that. I'm trying to think if we have anyone more that would do like a spoken word type stuff. I don't know. Can you guys think of anybody? Yeah. I think of Jess. Jess. Yeah. Jess makes all <laughs> sorts of stuff. Everything you see in Jess's screen, she's made all of that. The walls, the paper. <laughs> Um, one last question just came in, which I can answer. And then um, Dave sends an email and I can do like rapid fire through those really quick to go through and, and answer some of the questions that he submitted. Uh, suggestions on international medical insurance. So the organization that we recommend is Safety Wings. So safetywings.com. They're specifically an insurance that is for nomads, for people like us. Um, it's a really good rate. Um, 
and they help they do like travel insurance and then also health insurance and yeah and they work yeah, they, because they're really good i uh, yeah i call them yeah they're good uh i'll do the rapid fire round of the couple that we got over email as well and if other people have questions please uh submit them because after we're done with this if there's no more questions we'll end um question number one how do people deal with time differences with needy clients we talked about that a little bit just that time differences are a thing sometimes you have to shift your hours to match those um, a lot of times it might help just to be up front and tell them that you're going to be only available for certain windows of times if they're a needy client that makes it more difficult but i think a lot of it is expectation setting jess you're the expert yeah. in this so i don't know if you have anything to add um, yeah, I just think for me, it helps to be transparent with my clients so they know, hey, why isn't she responding to me because I'm asleep, you know, um, so they, they know that, but then I also make myself flexible. So if they need a call and it's going to be my night or early morning, I will, we will take it. But I also need them to know that they can't just call my cell phone necessarily because I might not have proper cell phone service. I get the local SIM card, so my other phone might not work. Or um, I like to schedule calls. I don't, it's that way I know I'm going to be awake and can schedule them. And then also if they send me checks, some of my clients like to send me physical checks to my house. Um, I can't deposit those. So then we do more digital stuff. So I try to be transparent with them, um, not only for the working and time zone thing, but also some other logistics too. Cool. Uh, the next question is, can you really deduct HP expenses from your business taxes? Uh, yes, asterisk. So it really depends on your situation. There's a lot of different tax code in a lot of different countries or a lot of different states. I know of a lot of people that have deducted their HP expenses from uh, their business taxes because it's a large professional network. There's a lot of like talks and workshops and professional development and all that stuff that happens with it. Yeah, we, so we can make an invoice as you want. Yeah, some ask people your say, yeah, yeah, ask your accountant, that's our thing. We have a lot of people that do it and uh, it's one of the things that really helps them and helps make HP more affordable. But we say talk to your accountant and get the specific advice for your company in your country and whatever, but we've had a lot of people successfully do it. Uh, the next question, is there time to work during the experience trips? So for those of you that don't know, we have normal HP trips. If you look on the website, those are like the ones where we're working for four weeks, eight weeks in a location. Then we have a couple experience trips, which are two week ones. Uh, for example, we're gonna be in Tel Aviv in two weeks, for two weeks, and we're really, really excited. Uh, I think we have one spot left if anyone's really interested. Um, but in the experience trips, they're shorter. And so the idea is we're taking a little less time working, a little bit more time experiencing the country. So I tell people that people will be working maybe 50% or 75% of the time. You probably won't be working 100% of the time, though I know some people that are going that are going to be. But we yeah. have, we're trying to do, it's a limited time, so we're trying to experience it more. Also on the experience trips, there's a couple of side trips that are included. So like going to the day trip to Jerusalem is included in the price. So there's some stuff like that that we're doing that's more of like, let's experience the city because we're only here for a short amount of time. That being said, most people are still working 50 to 75% of the time. Yeah, we are also gonna be working, so. Yeah, yeah. I are you? Yeah, I am. I have yeah. to work 150 percent of the time during the Tel Aviv trip. So, <laughs> if you, you need to work, buddy, you can sit next to me and Sada. Yeah. Um, the next question is about people who are visiting Europe who have to abide by the Schengen rule principles. So, if I can only spend 90 days in Europe, I assume you can only do two or three of the Europe trips at most. For those of you who don't know, if you, depending on your country and the visa regulations with the EU and the Schengen area which applies to American. So that's the perspective I'm gonna talk from. Uh, you only get 90 days in there out of a 180 day period. So pretty much if you're there for three months, then you have to be gone for three months before you're allowed back into most of the EU countries. Yeah. So or if you, you do, or yeah, or you can get a passport, Mary Sada. Um, but yeah, if you come for some of the trips for three months, then you would have to leave. So 
this summer we have like four or five months of European trips planned in a row that are all in that Schengen area. So for most people, if that is your case, like if you only have an American passport, it is not an option for you to attend for five months in a row. Please do not break the international laws and get me yeah. in trouble by overstaying your visa. Uh, two really quick ones and then we're done over here from my side. Was there an Estonia experience at once? There was, we took it off the website uh, right now because just logistically it's not gonna work out. We tried really hard to make it work. It doesn't look like it's gonna work. So we're putting up something instead. So uh, stay tuned, there will be stay something tuned. else coming at the end of August, that will be a short two week experience trip. Last one, can you get your own place as opposed to just being in the Hacker Paradise housing, which might be a shared room, or uh, sorry, your own room in a shared space. So we do sometimes provide housing that is your own individual unit. The place that I have here in Brazil is my own unit. There's like eight of us here that have our own units because that's what we opted to do. That was our what we preferred while other people preferred the co-living environment. So they have their own bedroom in like a three bedroom house with other HP people. So on a lot of trips, there is the option uh, for different types of accommodation. Even if you do come with us, if you're like, forget this, I'm so, I am particular about this thing. I want to make sure I am, know I'm getting the housing that works for me. Talk to us. We can do something where we just charge you for the program and you just pay for your housing separately and that's fine with us too. Yeah, but also happens when we go sold out for our housing and you sign up a little bit late, but you can always sign up and you just join for the program and you look for your own housing. Um, it also, it's also a possibility. Yeah. We, chat, we talked a lot. Oh man, did I say we were going to end before an hour and a half? Because I lied. It has been an hour and a half and we just barely finished. I feel like um, I'm like hot over here just because I've been talking and like moving my hand so much. Me, uh, I'm so sweaty with this. That's maybe <laughs> oversharing. Sorry. It's time to put Sada to bed. It's like 1.30 yeah. a.m. over there. Yeah, it's 1.30 a.m. Time to go to bed for me. Uh, yeah, so I'll just wrap it up. We don't have anything else to add, except if you, if anyone here has other questions for us or anything, you can get a hold of us by um, going to the website. You can obviously apply and then sign up for a time to chat with Sada and I directly. There's also a contact us page where you can send us an email if you have other questions. Just let us know what you're thinking. Um, we're really approachable people I hope you saw from this webinar but we're happy to help you out in any way so that you feel comfortable uh, and empowered on coming on a trip with us um, yeah anything else to add you guys no it was great all right thanks everybody we hope to see you on a trip come to Seoul don't go to Italy go to Italy learn to speak <laughs> Italian with your hands <laughs> thanks everybody bye bye, -bye. ciao ciao Ciao. Ciao, ciao.